and welcome to the End in Mind podcast. I'm your host, Caitlin, the owner of Meraki Media Management. The End in Mind is a place where we come to share stories, tips, and strategies of many entrepreneurs, creatives, business owners, and just some people that aren't willing to live the traditional lifestyle. We talk about how to live outside of the box today and how to incorporate what really is important in your life to keep that end goal always in mind. Again, if you would like to reach out to me in any type of way, you can find me on Instagram at Meraki underscore media underscore management. And I hope to hear from you all soon. Thanks so much and enjoy our show. What is up, party people? Welcome back to the End of Mind podcast. I'm your host, Caitlin. So excited to be here with you guys today. I wanted to remind you all really quickly before we jump into our show, we are running a giveaway this month. So if you leave us an Apple podcast review, you will be entered into a pool to win a free $25 gift card to any local coffee place of your choice. We can also send you a Starbucks gift card if you don't have any local coffee places places that you want to support, but our goal is to always lift up small businesses and local small business. So if you guys love our show, please take, you know, 30 seconds to leave us an Apple podcast review. If you're not sure how to leave one, you can always Google it or I can also leave directions in the show notes for you guys. So thank you so much. And I'm really excited to jump into today's topic. So this is a trend that I've been seeing with a few of my clients, a few of the people in the DMs that I've been talking to recently. And it's really around defining your offers. So when you are starting your own business, it is so scary, right? Oh my gosh, it's like one of the scariest things. And if you're starting a brick and mortar business and you are taking out a loan, that is even more scary. Let me tell you, I have not had that experience, but I'm sure that it is because you're already in a hole, right? And really, when you start any business, you are already in a hole. Even if you're starting an online business, for example, I h- hired a business coach with my within my first month of starting Meraki Media Management. That was a significant, you know, thousands of dollars already taken out of our budget, money that I really didn't have because I was just starting the business. You also have to start a website, right? You have certain types of expenses and things that you need to purchase for your business, gas to networking events. Networking events sometimes cost money, right? So you're in a hole. And it's really scary. And when you have limiting beliefs around money or limiting beliefs around your skill set, when you start off in a hole, well, that ain't good for our mindset, right? And I know for me, it about sent me into a tailspin. I mean, I was so chaotic every day working in my mom's basement. I was a sweaty mess. I literally would just be in the basement on my laptop, researching things, doing outreach on Instagram, sweating because I was so stressed about having no money. I'm living at my mom's house. I'm working out of her basement. I have no real idea of what I'm even doing for my business. I'm still trying to define all of that. And it was a really scary time for me. Definitely one that I wouldn't want to relive, to be honest. I'm so thankful that I did live it at one time to get me here now. But it's not somewhere that I would like to go back to. And the reason is, is because it brought up so many anxieties for me you guys and that's how I would also define limiting beliefs it's all the same thing to me I get like a pit in my stomach I sweat profusely I panic sometimes I'll even like lash out at people that I love because I'm just so stressed right about money time energy that I'm putting in and it's not always you know turning out the results that I want it's really frustrating when you're first starting and what makes that even harder is coming up with an offer or finding one thing that you're actually good at because 90% of the time when you're out there and you're market researching people want you to do multiple things or they want you to add on services to what you originally thought you would just be offering one thing for or they want you to change up your service you were offering it you know live and they actually want a pre-recorded course well 
WTF, now that pre-recorded course is going to take me six months to create. I don't have six months to create that pre-recorded course, right? I just want to run it live. There is a lot of things that come up. And I think if you guys haven't had a listen to our last podcast episode about really settling back into your intuition and getting reconnected with yourself, go back and have a listen to that because we really go into people, low vibes, how to eliminate them from your lives and start to be more self-aware about the decisions that you're making and what they're calling into your life because it it's all connected. But really when you are designing and creating an offer, you have to listen to all of these people. And That is even more challenging because you're trying to decipher what you have to create, but you're being told by Susie Q that she wants a pre-recorded course, and then you're being told by Amy that she wants a one-on-one right? So it's so different. How are you supposed to come up with one offer for both people? Really what it comes down to is defining where you're going to make money. Is Amy going to pay you quicker or is Susie Q going to pay you quicker, right? And is the Susie Q model going to be able to be reused? Yes, because she wanted the pre-recorded course. So that's something that you'll continue to make money off of and continue to get more money back from you more and more times again, even though you've just spent an hour or so on it. But maybe you work with Amy and the one-on-one and you get more information about what Amy needed coaching wise. So then you add that to your course, right? What I did um, when I had this exact same predicament when I was starting Meraki Media, I actually created the training courses a new one each week. So I would know what the clients were struggling with the week prior, and then I would include that information in the next training so that it would all be covered, so that they wouldn't have any problems moving through that training. And it actually made the training and perfected the training by the end where I could reuse those videos and resell that course for another six months until Instagram had changed their platform. And I made a significant amount of money off of it. I actually had five people sign up for my first training course and I signed them up at I believe around 250 per course maybe 500 we bumped it up to eventually that might have been like the you know pre-special that they got because they were kind of my guinea pigs love you guys if you're listening thank you for being my guinea pigs in our first business Instagram training you rock and that course taught me so much about what I do if you are in a service-based business or even if you are creating a product you have to be able to talk to your clientele. You have to know exactly what they want, guys. And it's really hard because, like I said, you will get so many different answers. But when you get the answers, brain dump them all into a document, add them to an Excel sheet, organize them somehow in your brain. Maybe you add post-it notes and you put them on the wall, right? Whatever is going to work best for you mentally. And I want you to sit down and think about what is going to make you money and continue to make you money in your sleep, if possible. What can you reuse over and over and over again if you do create a course to make yourself more money? Or what do you want? If you want to work with people one-on-one, then don't even waste time creating the course, right? If you maybe want to work with a few people one-on-one, maybe you work with 10 people one-on-one so that you have enough information to create your course, right? You see how I'm trying to explain the process to you guys. I don't don't want you to waste time going all in and creating a course that you're going to have to recreate after you end up training four to five people. And that happens all the time. What's even worse is that some of those people won't recreate the course. They'll just continue to sell it and they'll take money from people. And the course isn't even benefiting anyone. It happens all the time. So be weary of those people that are reaching out to you guys. Make sure that they are actually creating offers that are going to benefit you and push your business forward. I don't want you all investing in something that's not worth it. For example, I actually just signed up with a new coach really, really interesting. I haven't gotten into any of the course information yet. I'm so excited, you guys, and I'll be sharing everything as I go, all of what I learn. You know me, though. I have to experiment and test it all first before I come and share it with you guys here. So that is what I will be doing for the next probably five to six months, and then I will come back and tell you guys the results. But I am so excited about working with him. When I was on the call, I got chills when we were talking about different types 
types of skill sets that he's going to add to my toolbox. I knew that that's exactly what I needed for clients that are starting to expand with me and up level, right? If you are in the type of business where your clients can grow with you, you have to be willing to expand your skill set, right? I have certain clients that may want to possibly invest in ads in the future. So it's smart for me to toe dip into the ad realm with this new trainer or coach and start to really understand what can I start to offer for my organic community that's in alignment for Meraki Media Management. So even when you go and you work with a course or coach, really, I don't want you all to take everything that they say and follow it to a T. Because if you do that, then everyone would be doing it and everyone would be making millions of dollars and everyone would be an Instagram influencer, right? It's just not possible. You have to be willing to put your own spin on it. So when you get this market research from Susie Q, Amy, your new coach, take it and digest it. Don't act on it right away. You know, if you want to test out a few things, experiment a little. Don't be afraid to experiment. But you have to identify digest the advice before you can make your own decision. So many coaches out there will continue to invest in new coaching or invest in new education and they don't even have the time to take the course. It happens, right? We all do it. We think we have enough time. We think we're superwoman. We're not. And then it does end up being a waste of money. So with this course, I knew it was going to fit well into my schedule. It's actually a a live meeting course, but we have one meeting a week and it's in the afternoon when I normally don't have client calls, which I can start to block off each week. And they also have information that I can do on my own prior to coming to the meeting. So it works really well for my structure and what I do on a daily basis is so fluid and always changing. If we're onboarding new clients, I'm busy. I can't be taking my course during the day, right? It's just not possible for me. So this avenue works and this this is what I and what I want you guys to start to think about when you're starting to invest in coaching. It's really important that you work with the right people so they're not pushing all of their own ideologies onto you or giving you these grand goals that you maybe might not be able to reach because then it hurts your ego, right? It hurts the ego. It hurts the soul. It hurts, you know, your criteria, your expectation of yourself is lost, right? And it can sometimes set you back. So be realistic with yourself. Be realistic with your coaches. Don't think, you know, all of this fancy language is just going to make you millions of dollars in a year. It's probably not going to happen. If it did, fantastic. But If these, you know, big almost pseudo pieces of expectations are being marketed to you, it's most likely not true and it's most likely not going to convert for you and all it will do is continue to take money out of your pocket, which is really just not going to benefit you and your business in the long run. So what's really important here, which we've been talking about this week, is finding that one thing to focus on. So if you're going to focus on coaching for maybe your first 10 clients, your one-on-one coaching, then you're going to move to creating a course because you know that that's going to exponentially create income for you while you're sleeping because you can put it up on your website and now you've created a network large enough that is willing to buy from you, you know, monthly or every six months, however many times you relaunch the course. But you have one thing, one thing that you're focusing on. You're not spread thin with your big client that's asking you to write a newsletter and manage their social media and post to their Facebook group and, you know, be present on LinkedIn, right? It's too much because you have to come up with one specialty, one niche where you know that you can dominate and then you can start to expand out. So if you continue to draw these people in different types of clients like this, it will just end up hurting you and hurting your business because you just don't have the time to give it to them. So one of my clients, you know, a lot of her limiting beliefs or or worries was around her experience. And 
it's so sad because she's so fantastic and she has so much to add and she's a wonderful mom and can speak on so many things and has so much experience to offer to the world. But this comes up for everybody and it can come up at different times. Even some people who have been in business for five to 10 years have these limiting beliefs come back up. You know, this happens, especially as people are pivoting with what we saw in 2020, as people are expanding and coming up to this new awakening of self-awareness these limiting beliefs resurface so we just have to be aware of them and as we chatted through everything you know she definitely got clear on her new offer we have a great plan for her we know that she's going to be able to show up and offer you know some really great advice for her clients and hopefully change their lives because she has the knowledge within her but when you're maybe not selling or working with people all the time right that sometimes can get lost so if you're only selling a course and you're not doing one-on-ones, that need for you to be present can be lost within yourself as well. So, you know, if you guys ever follow Amanda Bucci, she's really well known in the social media space, holistic space, um, wonderful, wonderful person. And she's been in this, you know, I would say for like 10 years or so now. She's huge. And she shared that she actually had pivoted in 2020 to only working with people one on one. And now she's reopening her course again because she is now ready to, you know, start redeveloping courses and getting out to the masses again. So different points in business, you will want different things and you'll want to create different things and it's fluid and it flows. But of course, those limiting beliefs can always re-arise. So being more aware about those things that may be holding you back will allow you to come up with your one offer. They will allow you to create, you know, exactly what you need. I want to just touch on this as well. Society teaches us that all of these answers that we need for our business, for ourselves, for our lives are external. We have to search for them. We have to hire a coach. We have to maybe go and research or go to college or find someone to fall in love with because that's how we're going to learn about ourselves and this has been taught for so many years I grew up with this lifestyle that is how you know if you were born in the 1990s that is how it was right even after now it's still like that you can see it it's how marketing works it's how everything works in life they teach you that you have a lack of something and then they try to sell you. So what I want you guys to know is that almost always, yes, you can gain information from other people. You can gain this market research, but the answer is in within you. The answer is not out there from everyone else. You know, maybe you'll hear something that someone else says that will click inside your brain and click and give you that intuitive thought. But you're still having the thought. You're still making the choice. You're still moving forward, right? You're still designing your life. And even though those people maybe said something or gave you an idea, idea, that doesn't mean that all of a sudden your, you know, your success is owed to them or something, or that you should always continue to search for answers outside of yourself. It actually means that you should maybe look within. You know, as we come up to some of these winter months, we're coming up to another new moon. And this new moon is actually called the harvest moon. And the harvest moon is all about being grateful for what we have currently and settling into the winter months to get more internal, to look at all the things that we've created over the summer. And what we will continue to create in the winter will actually be internal. You know, the winter is all about getting back connected with yourself, shelling up a little. You know, I'll be doing a lot of meditations this winter. I have a lot of really great ways and things I want to try out for certain types of seasonal depression and things like that that used to get me in funks. And now I feel like I have the tools to stay away from that by not looking externally, actually looking internally. And that's what the end in mind is all about. We want to go out to people, 
to find different types of ideas to spark our creativity. But then we come back, we digest the knowledge, and we create what we want, not based around what everyone else wants. So I hope you guys enjoyed this podcast episode. If you did, don't forget to leave us that that Apple podcast review. um, And please drop your Instagram handle in there. You will be entered in to win a $25 gift card to a coffee shop of your choice. Okay, thanks so much, guys. And I will see you next week. Thank you so much for listening to The End in Mind. I would like to remind you all, if you haven't yet reached out to me on Instagram, we are at Meraki underscore media underscore management. It will be in our show notes as well. If you would like to reach out to me, we always offer free coaching through Instagram based around our Instagram training and our business Instagram practices. If you need any type of support, please do not hesitate to reach out to me there. And we also offer several different types of consulting and training packages if you're looking for a little bit more in-depth tips. So thank you all for listening in. And of course, I want you all to keep the end in mind as you continue with your day and or work week. Have a great week and I will see you all next time.